So I'm using my favorite Bernat Forever fleece yarn in coal. In a lot of the pictures it's showing up, it looks black. It's really a, a nice, um, if I can get this, it's a nice dark gray. It's definitely gray though. It is not black. This is bergamot. Again, it kind of is looking more orange. It has an, an orange tinge to it, but it's more on the gold side. And this is Winter Waves. It's a taupey color with just a just a hint of a lavender. And this is matcha, kind of a moss green, beautiful color. They're all incredibly, incredibly soft. Now, once you get the hang of this pattern, it's really easy. I used a nine millimeter chunky big hook. You could go bigger or smaller, eight or 10 would be fine. And then I'm using an eight millimeter for my border. You can chain any number you want. Just make it as wide as you like. A little bit wider because it will shrink up on you a little bit. If you're making the pattern, you're going to chain 100. I'm making a sample size here. So I'll just chain several. I'm not even counting because this particular pattern, it does not matter how many you chain. We'll call that good. All right, now you're just going to come back with herringbone half double crochet. Every time you switch to, this is going to be color A. Of course, you can make color A any color you want to. Anytime you switch out, uh, to your color A, there will be four rows of herringbone half double crochet in full stitch. So come over to the second chain from your hook, this one to this one. I like to go in the back bump, you don't have to. Herringbone half double crochet. You have, let's start that again, just in case you don't know the stitch. My favorite stitch, yarn over. Go into your stitch, pull it through. You have three loops on your hook. Pull that first loop through the second loop, yarn over, and pull through the remaining two loops. Let's do that again. Yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, pull the first one through the second one, and pull through the remaining two. I like this stitch because it provides a lot of texture and interest. It ends up angling this way and then the opposite way when you come back. So go ahead to the end of your row. If you're making a big throw like I did. It'll take you a little while. <laughs> and I'll meet you back here for row two. Right, at the end of row one, it should look something like this. I did go into the back bumps. and It just ends up with this nice foundation but you don't have to for this particular pattern especially if you're making a border if you're not making a border this does make a nice edge I will show you pictures of the blanket with and without the border it looks really nice without the border chain one and turn and this is just going to be your four row repeat every time you switch over to color a this is color a you're going to go into the first full stitch and make your herringbone half double crochet. You go into every full stitch and make your herringbone half double crochet. And what I mean by the full stitch is there's your front loop and your back loop. You're going to go underneath both of those. When we get to the color change and we switch over to eight rows, You'll be doing a front loop and back loop. So continue on. When you get to the end of row two, just chain one and come back with your herringbone half double crochet all the way across. Chain one and come back again. So you're going to have four rows total of this color A. And I'll meet you at the end of row four. All right, I'm at the end of row four. 
row four actually ends on the wrong side, you know, because the tail from your initial chain is on the right. This is always your right side. Your tail will be on the left. All right, so into the last stitch, we're going to be changing colors now. Start your half herringbone half double crochet. Bring that loop through the first loop and then drop your yarn. And I'm going to cut it. I'm not going to carry it. You could if you wanted to, especially if you're making a border. But there are eight rows in between the next set of four. So I'm just going to cut mine. I don't mind weaving in the ends, especially with chunky yarn. It's really easy. So here you have a partial herringbone half double crochet. And we're going to move on to the next color. For mine, it is the bergamot, that gold color. Any color combination here would be great. You can use just two colors. Just keep switching back and forth between A and B, and it would be gorgeous. I don't know if you've seen my other videos. I tend to get bored pretty easily, so I do like switching colors and I like switching stitch patterns. All right, so we're going to chain one. I'm going to include the tail in my chain here and then just kind of pull on it. You don't have to do that. It makes me feel like it's more secure. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Now, first stitch, you're going to go through the whole first stitch. Pull through, and this is just a regular half double crochet. There seemed to be another loop, but it was just because of the tail. Okay. Now, here's where it switches up. We're going to do regular half double crochets, and we're going to alternate front loop only, which is this one, half double. Your brain is going to want to continue to make the herringbone half double crochet until you're about halfway through the, the eight rows. And then when you switch back over to herringbone half double crochet, <laughs> your brain is going to want to go with regular uh, half double crochets. But you'll get the hang of it. So that was front loop only. And now back loop only. And that's, that's it. You're going to alternate. Front loop only, back loop only. I want to go a few more to show you. If you get distracted, you have to get up and answer the phone, or you need to get something to drink, and you forget if you were on front or back, you can see the front loop only pulls the stitch to the front, and the back loop only pulls it to the back. So that's also a good thing to check every now and then to make sure that you have it correct. Front, back, front, back, front, back. So now I know that I have to go to the front loop only. That's how I remember. When I first did this stitch a long time ago, I got really confused. But now that I, I see, especially with the chunky yarn, you can see that pushes to the back, pushes to the front, pushes to the back, pushes to the front. And that is it. You are going to do this at the end of the row. You will just chain one and turn. Go into, oh, I forgot, I did forget to tell you at the end of the row, go into the full stitch. So the beginning of the row, go into the full stitch with a half double crochet and then alternate front loop only, back loop only, front loop only, back loop only, all the way across until you get to the last stitch and go through the full stitch with a half double crochet. Chain one and turn, and again, full stitch in the first stitch only, and then alternate front loop, back loop. All right, I will join you at the end of eight rows of this. I did want to mention before you get too far along, it took me probably about two and a half skeins of the coal, the color, color A, whatever color A you have, and because I did an extra row or an extra width, eight rows, 
of the bergamot at the end. Um, it was a little bit over two skeins. The others were uh, right at two skeins. So if you want to, because it did come out so long, especially if you're making a border, uh, you can make six rows instead of eight. Also, you could pull this down to two rows if you want, but I like the way it looks with four. You get that nice textured pattern. All right, I just wanted to mention that so that you know you would actually need three skeins of this to complete and also three you'll still you'll have some left over um, of the bergamot or whatever your color b is but you can cut it down to six rows and that would keep it keep it down to two skeins so there you go and again i will see you at the end of eight rows of your color b i just want to show you this is how it would look if you did four rows of each and it would be really pretty and very symmetrical and it would save you some yarn <laughs> if you'd like to do if that. If you lost track of how many rows you have, this is how I look at it. This is my first row. And then these little bumps that look like knots, that's your second. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Also, it's going to shrink up a little bit on you with this particular pattern uh, and just pull it out just a little bit, even with your other. This herringbone half double crochet is going to have a little bit of a an edge here that sticks out. But I like that look. Some people would probably say, oh, you need to straighten those lines out. I like that one. I'm good with it. So that is your pattern. Four rows of herringbone half double crochet with your color A. Eight rows of half double crochet in the first full stitch and then alternate half double crochet front loop only, back loop only, all the way across. And in your last full stitch, um, make another half double crochet and then chain one and turn and you do that for eight rows every time you change colors that's what you're going to do so after color b you're going to go back to color a which for me was coal four rows and then you'll switch out to color c and you'll go back to this pattern for eight rows so it just depends how many colors you chose. Just to a note, I did not leave myself a very long tail here. I do suggest that you leave a nice long tail for weaving in later. The chunky yarn is super easy to weave in. So when you change out, err on the side of leaving yourself a really long tail, especially if you're... Uh, including the tail in the chain because that shrinks it up just a little bit. Just wanted to let you know because I, I already gave myself a short tail there. <laughs> Have fun. Okay. I am hoping to save you some time and some yarn. I, this is my sample blanket. I went around with double crochets, three double crochet in the corner, double crochets all the way down the side. If you want to make a border, go right ahead. This is the most uh, time consuming part, trying to get the stitches fairly even. They don't have to be perfect. All double crochet, all the way around. Every time you get to a corner, three double crochet in the corner. And then I came back, I attached to the first double crochet of the three in the corner, <clears throat> excuse me, with the bergamot with a slip stitch, chain two, and did front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet, all the way around. And then I came back, connected with a slip stitch with the coal again, the color A, 
and one around one more time with front post, back post, double crochet. On the sample size, this looks pretty good. My idea was to use each color on the border of the blanket. I actually did that. I wish I had taken a video or a picture. I did not care for the way it came out. It looked just way too busy. So I took that out. Frogging, as they say. Rip it, rip it, rip it. And then I decided, well, let me go back and do just the color A, the coal. I didn't care for that either. I think that this particular blanket looks best without the border. If you want to make a border, just make a simple border. Um, I also would suggest if you decide you wanted to make a border, <laughs> if this isn't too late, if you haven't made the blanket yet, I would go with just two rows um, at the very beginning and two rows at the very end because that border is going to add that thickness. Personally, I think it looks better without a border. This is my sample size ended up, I chained 22, and this is actually going to be just a little uh, table runner that I can put my my fall pumpkins. I have some crocheted pumpkins. This is the right side, or I think the side that looks better. This is the other side. It's right, whatever you deem is right. <laughs> so anyway, if you choose to make a border, go right ahead. I do not have the video for that. I, like I said, I'm trying to save you some time and frustration. So Pretend this is your last row. You're just going to cut your yarn when you get to that final fourth row of your last color of the pattern. Just come in here. You, you could either just make a chain, cut your yarn, pull it through, and pull it tight, or you can come through, pull it here, go into a couple of stitches down, see where that's coming out, I don't know if you can see that, and that's where the stitch is coming out, pull that forward, go, go in the middle there, and then in the back, pull it through. And that just gives you a nice clean finish. And then just weave in your end, weave in all your ends. And um, I'll have some pictures at the end to show you without the border. I wish I had taken pictures with the border. It was late at night and I just did not care, care for it. I thought it detracted from the look of the blanket instead of adding to it. All right, let me know what you think. Let me know if you added a border or chose to make it this way, if you use different colors. It's so soft. I think you're going to love it. Finally fall, yay! Mm -hmm.